Welcome to my your customizing journey. My name is Josephine and these are my creatures. This is the second video of making my Renfair swap doll. If you have not seen the first one, I will link it in the info card so that you can watch that first. Here is some inspiration pictures so that you have an idea what I'm making here. In this video, I will show you how I made the wig and historical slash Renfair costume. Also, I will take you guys with me when I go shopping for extra goodies in a real medieval renaissance festival that will be on the end of the video, so do watch all of it to see what I bought for my partner. So, let's get to the video. I start with the wig. First step is to make the braid that goes around the crown of her head. I glue together wefts to make one thicker one. I braid the hair and seal the end with glue. Then it's time to make the wig cap. For that I just paper mache one using toilet paper and craft glue. To make the wig stay on her head, I use magnets. I already hide the corresponding magnet to her head. I trim the wig cap to fit my needs. This wig is kind of like a toupee, for it will only fit the doll's crown and the back of the head. To secure the magnet in place, I cover it with fabric and glue. I also painted the cap. My idea was that it would look better that way, but no, it still looks weird. I start gluing the wefts from the bottom first. Then I finesse the braid into the spot that I like and glue it down, but only on the tips of the braid. I work my way up, lifting the braid when needed. When I reach the end of the wig, I glue down the wefts right on the edge and then glue another one right under the edge and then flip it to have a nice finish. Then I use this clear thread meant for sewing. You could also use thin fishing line for this. I just sew the braid in place. I was not liking the edge of the wig, so I added another braid to make the wig sit better on her head. Then I'm decorating the hairdo with pearls. I do two rows of cream colored pearls and then connect them with smaller white pearls in diagonal lines. Do you know those hair nets decorated with pearls? I knew right away that I wanted to make one of those for my doll. In addition to the white and cream pearls, I use these skinny red ones too. I suggest you do a drawing of the pattern you want to make and plan out the design you like. I had a drawing of the design I wanted to make and it was so helpful to reference that because you get very confused easily. But pretty much what I'm creating is just lines that connect every time they cross each other. Then it's time to curl the hair. I do have to say I wish I would have braided the hair and boil washed it instead. I think the end result would have been nicer that way. But I decided to curl it, so no going back anymore. I use straws and rubber bands to style the hair. I poke some pins in there to hold the straws in place. Then to set the curls, I boil wash them, which means I just pour hot water on the hair. I let the curls dry completely before I unravel them. Then 
then I had the great idea to try to brush the curls out and it did not turn out good. I suggest instead of brushing them out like you would do to human hair, just gently split the curls into smaller sections. I made this simple chemise out of cotton fabric. Now to finish off the raw edges, I'm using glue and folding the fabric inwards. To make the chemise a little bit nicer, I'm adding this lace and ribbon to decorate it. Close to chemise, I added just regular sewing thread and pulled it closed. Now to the overdress and bodice. I wrap her torso in kitchen wrap and then use craft glue and toilet paper to make a base for the bodice. After the paper mache cast is fully dry, I'm splitting it open by cutting it at the front. I trim the excess with scissors. To cover the paper mache, I made this quick mock up out of paper and then cut it out in red fabric. It's smart to smooth out the surface of the paper mache with a couple layers of glue, especially if you are using a shiny fabric. Next step is to glue on the fabric to cover the paper mache. For the skirt part of the overdress, I just cut out a rectangular piece that is as long as the doll from the empire waistline to the ground, plus some seam allowance. I'm starting out by zigzagging the raw edges and then folding them over, except the top part that is going to get gathered at the waist. I'm creating these pleats so that the skirt has some volume. I secure my pleats in place by sewing a straight line right across them. Then it's time to sew the skirt and bodice together at the waist. Now I'm making the underskirt. I wanted a layer of contrasting fabric between the chemise and the overdress. The skirt is very simple, it has elastic at the waist and a snap closure at the back. In this time period and in Tudor style clothes, it was not uncommon to show off all the layers of your clothing. More layers, the more wealth you had. Then I'm decorating the hem of the overdress with some pleated ribbon and contrasting trim.
Here I'm puncturing some holes for the ribbon that is going to close the dress at the front. I dabbed some glue into the sides of the holes to protect the fabric from unraveling. I'm creating a mock-up of the sleeves using tape. Once I'm happy with the size and shape of them, I'm transferring it to the fabric. I do have to admit that I got a little bit lazy at this point and instead of stitching them, I used glue. But these are super finicky and tiny pieces and I would have anyway had to use glue or fray check to deal with the fraying, so this was kind of hitting two flies with one stroke. To fix the sleeves in place, I just use more ribbon. This is how the sleeves would have been held in place on the real Renaissance dress, so I'm happy that this detail works also for door scale. I did some finishing touches on the hair. Because she already has a pair of handmade shoes, I opted for just repainting the factory shoes for her. And these Rochelle shoes are just perfect fit. Now we are done. The location for this photo shoot was just perfect. This is the park that surrounds my hometown's biggest church. Hi everyone, so we are in my car and I'm trying out vlogging for the first time. Um, I'm in my day job's parking lot in Ulvila and Ulvila hosts every year this sort of renaissance uh, medieval fair uh, to celebrate the long history of the town. The town is over 650 years old, so six times the age of, of our country. Finland is only about 100 years old, so this town is, is very old. And um, I thought about going shopping in the fair and trying to find something to send to my partner along with this doll that I made for them. So I don't know who is my partner, so I have to find something that is sort of unisex and can that something that everybody can enjoy and to be sort of Renaissance medieval fair thing. So not like modern crap. I need to find something maybe handmade or something we'll see and I will try to take you guys with me hopefully there isn't too many people because if there is a lot of people uh, I'm not sure how the filming is going to go but at least I will take some you know distant shots let's get to it I'm 
Tämä voisi olla aika hyvä paikka. No luulis, että olisi niin kuin... En tiedä mistä ne on. Niin silti oltiin täällä. Niin ne oli ehkä semmosia väkimäärältä hiljaisempia. Mut on... Niin listin puoletaan ja sitten tausaa tommos. Tosi kuuma. Ja sitten se palaa kuumaksi. Kato, nyt on tosi kuuma rauta. Sitten saa muotoa. Kato. Se tekee sitten kaikki tommosia hienoja takojuttuja. Ha, huh, we're back. Let me show you guys what I got for my swap partner. First thing I got was these tiny, teeny tiny little baskets. These are made out of birch bark. These are very like traditional Finnish, traditional Finnish thing. So. That was the first thing. Then I got this little wooden spoon. And the next thing I got was this piece of soap. This is called um, Elevan Puu, which is Tree of Life in English. And this is uh, lime scented salt soap. And this is completely eco friendly, natural, handmade. It smells divine. <laughs> And the last thing I got was this piece of pare. And pare is a thing that um, in a long, long time ago, people would make their uh, roofs out of. So this is a kind of medieval <laughs> roof shingle. And I'm planning on painting this or like decorating it. I haven't really figured that out, but I think it might look cool. So I bought it and it was like 50 cents only. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't yet done that. Like this video and leave a comment. I would love to know what you think. Follow me on Instagram at Josephine's Creatures and until next time, bye.